This video is my personal review of living here exposing my daughter not being safe, the lack of safety period, being offered hard drugs, negligence, fights, bugs, maintenance, cars being vandalized, and more. Hi, my name is Tahira and the purpose of this video is to do my own personal review of my experience of living at Ascent Peachtree, which is located in Atlanta, Georgia at 161 Peachtree Center Avenue. Um, I'm hoping that even if I don't get any concessions to the emails that I have sent, my lawyer has sent to um, Graystar and Ascent, I'm hoping to um, honestly help another family so that they don't have to go through what I went through. So I have a, she's 12 now. I have a 12 year old daughter and I have been emailing the leasing office, like I said, from August of last year because she has been waking up high. Okay. So in the middle of the night, my daughter wakes up with headaches. Her eyes are red. She's dizzy. She's not feeling good. She's having to drink water. She can't really explain how she's feeling. And it's pretty much because of the smoke coming in through my apartment through the vents that come into her bedroom, that come into her bathroom, and that come into the hallway. So as soon as you walk into my apartment, you can smell the strong stench of Mary, Mary Jane. Now here is the front door, and then here to the left is the door that leads to my daughter's bedroom and her bathroom. And then when it moves back to the foyer, you'll see two of the three vents that funnels in the smell. Now, every time that I email or I speak to somebody, they say they're gonna look into it. Um, they're so sorry, what can they do? Now, from August to February, that's all I've been hearing. We're gonna look into it. They haven't figure out, figured out the apartment. They haven't looked at the floor plans. They haven't looked at the venting, like the vent systems, HVAC. They haven't looked at any of that to try to help me and my child because I keep telling them that my 11-year-old daughter, because she was 11 at the time, my 11-year-old daughter is waking up high and you guys are doing nothing about it. So in the middle of the night when she feels this way, I then have to uproot me and my child to go stay somewhere else so that she can sleep and she's not been exposed to illegal substances because it's not legal in Georgia. Now I've taken my daughter to the doctors and they have um, diagnosed her with having bronchospasms due to secondhand smoke. I have the doctor's note. I have the doctor saying that she shouldn't be exposed to secondhand smoke. Um, so at that point, now I got to move me and my child out because the leasing office and Great Star isn't trying to do anything about it. Um, I've spoken to the regional manager, and that's the highest that I've that I've spoken to. I've spoken to the regional manager, and I showed up to the office um, to the leasing office a week after my lawyer sent the email um, to Great Star and to Ascent because they didn't reply. So when I talked to the um, to Autumn, which is the regional manager, she's just, she's just so sorry. She understands. She can't believe this is happening to my daughter. Poor baby. X, Y, Z. Gives me her personal phone number. I talked to her the next day. She said nobody has responded to her. She's going to let me know. Nothing. So the day after that, I sent a text like, hey, have you heard anything? Nothing. Uh, I think then the weekend passed. So then I send a text. Hey, have you heard anything? Nothing. I then send an email. Hey, have you heard anything? Nothing. So at this point, everybody is ignoring me. And the fact that my daughter has been, has been experiencing lightheadedness, headaches, red eyes. Um, she's been dizzy. So I'm pretty sure by now, a lot of people know the side effects or the effects of being exposed to marijuana, secondhand smoke. Um, and that's what my 11 year old daughter has been exposed to and been having and has been having symptoms, but nobody wants to do anything about it. So therefore I want to avoid any other families from going, this, going through this because it's extremely frustrating and it's very frustrating when you're trying to protect your child and the residents that you're staying in, that you're spending thousands of dollars to stay in, they're not doing anything about it because they don't care. They just want your money. So for this particular one issue, the only um, accommodations they wanted to make was February, when my lease is about to be up, was to move into another unit. I don't want to move to another unit at this point. I just need to leave because it's marijuana smelling in the hallway, in the elevators, in the lobby downstairs. You walk past somebody, you're going to smell weed. So my daughter keeps being exposed to secondhand smoke and you guys are doing nothing about it. I've had the police department to show up, the fire department to show up. I've had managers come up. I've had the concierge to come up, file it in their reports, send emails. Nobody has done anything. Nobody has checked any type of ventilation systems, nothing at all to try to help me and my child and keep us safe from the secondhand, from the effects of secondhand smoke. So on top of me speaking to Nolan that works at the front desk, Brittany, she's new. Um, Autumn, which is the regional manager. I sent an email to someone named Leah, um, somebody named T. Klein with Graystar. Nobody has gotten back to me. Nobody has made any accommodations besides, hey, for the last couple months that you're here, we can move you to another unit, which makes zero sense to me. I have been offered hard drugs by living in this building. 
um the lobby smells like urination now this is the residence parking lobby entrance that nine times out of ten smells like urination and has homeless people outside it's homeless people all outside now this is the outside of the residence parking lobby entrance that smells like urination also has homeless people that likes to chill out here and just wait for you especially at nighttime it's homeless people that come up through the steps so that means that you're not safe i think that they just hired um uh, on campus security guard or police officers uh, i don't know they sent out an email saying that they did i haven't seen them um you're gonna go through that they have the cars that are being vandalized and these cars are being vandalized vandalized on the levels of the residence so i've seen cars um with the glass you know because their cars have gotten broken into the seat like the roof of the of the parking garage has fallen on cars so as you can see they still haven't fixed the roof from when it fell on people's cars and damaged them they're not doing they don't do, do anything about anything i've put in work orders and they've been closed immediately without the issue being fixed it was excuse me it was one point where i did it i want to say 13 times like back to back to back and the person whoever was working um on the maintenance was literally going in right after I would put in a work order and closing out the issue without fixing the issue. I, I think that's I think that's a violation. Let's talk about the fights. People have children, people have families here, but there are fights, multiple fights, okay? There are police showing up consistently because there are domestic violence calls, domestic violence calls. There are calls of um, people walking into their apartments that are strangers, that are homeless, that are um, walking into their homes. Um, and nobody's doing anything about anything. They collect your rent money, however much that is, for the thousands of dollars that you're spending to stay downtown. And nothing. Like, there is no safety here. There is no peace of mind here for your car, for your family, for your own safety. Nothing. And then we have the bugs. So, um, in the main lobby, you will see like these little bugs. And they'll just be walking around like they live there too. You go into the gym, you'll see them all over the floor, all up the walls. You'll see them on the machines. They're pretty much all over the place. Um, they say that pest control is going to come. They're going to come and fix the issue. So they don't respond to us. They don't respond to the bugs. They don't respond to the fights. They don't respond to the EV machines, the EV chargers that are for electric vehicles because I have an electric vehicle. They don't respond to those not working because there was, I believe, 12. I think we have 12 chargers and for months, none of them work. Then when they do work, it's only two that work. Then when the two work, they're taken and then everything will stop working. Um, yeah, so pretty much my experience here at a luxury apartment that stays in downtown Atlanta has been terrible. Terrible. I truly hope that this video does, this review helps somebody, helps a family, um, and it gives a realistic expectation of what you may experience here. Pretty much nobody here is renewing their leases. They were spiking up people's rent to renew $400, I've heard $700. So a lot of us are moving out. And it's not just because that they are going up on your rent. Um, nobody's happy here, like it's not safe. It's so much drama, it's so much chaos, Is there is no safety, there is no answers to your concerns. So 
at this point, you have to stay until your lease is up and then find somewhere else to go that's safer for you and your family. Good luck, guys. Thanks for watching.